And I think for you to have made that conscious decision, that's big because a lot of people don't. Well, I didn't really have a choice. James was like, if you work, <laughs> he was like, if you keep working like this, we ain't going to be. <laughs> Welcome to episode seven of the Edgar Sells Vieira podcast coming to you live from CLI Studios here in Melbourne, Florida um, with my special guest, Megan Ross. Yes. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. How's it going? It's good. Ready for tomorrow. I know it's like craziness, uh, holiday coming up. Yep. Uh, we were kind of just talking that off I camera. Know. So yeah. you're not doing too much cooking, but Luckily, you can do some stuff to, tomorrow. I will do a couple of casseroles. But other than that, <laughs> no. Somebody else does the brunt of it. Thank the Lord. What's your favorite uh, dish usually? Ooh, what do you like to eat on Thanksgiving? That's really tough. Um, I love honey baked ham. Honey baked ham. That's okay. really the only time of the year that I eat it. Really? Yeah. But I make a really good sweet potato casserole. Hmm. So I like that too. Very and then cool. I make a really good chocolate pie. Yeah, so it's no secret tomorrow's Thanksgiving, right? So, I mean, um, I'm off today. I'm off, been off the last two days. Well, um, lucky you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, we're, we're technically working. <laughs> we're here. Um, That's true. We're shooting some some more stuff later on with the guys. Uh, and obviously, and we have um, John and Alex in the building today, which is pretty cool um, to see them. I haven't seen you guys in a bit, so it's good to see you guys. Um, so, Megan, thank you for obviously accepting and coming on. Um you know, I've been wanting to get you on here um, just because, I mean, I'm not really sure exactly how long you've been doing real estate, um, but I know in the time that you have been doing it, you've been, you've been crushing it. Uh, big, big time. Um, from the real estate side, um, obviously, um, you are a part of the HBCA the mm -hmm. last couple of years, which... Um, very, very cool. Obviously, you know, me being a new construction, but a realtor and you being on the you know general real estate side, we do collaborate on things and we live in the same community. We know a lot of the same people and we're basically selling homes more or less in the same area, right? right. I'm in the bubble. You're in the real world is what I like to say. I try to stay in the bubble some <laughs> close to home. No, it doesn't a, always work that way. It's a cool place though, right? It is. I, I think, love it. Um, you know, I'm coming from New Jersey. This is, you know, like a dream for me to kind of be here. So, yeah. um, real quick, I always like to say, so where are you from? Um, or where were you born? Um, how did you get here? Tell us a little bit about who is Megan Ross. So I am originally from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. That's where I actually started my real estate career. So I got my license up there and I actually still have my broker's license up there. I just keep it. Um, I worked hard for it. <laughs> we moved down here uh, oh, almost nine, see, a little over nine years ago. So okay. it's, you know, it's been a little over nine years, and I immediately got my license down here when we moved here. Did you transfer it, or I think you had to, so, like, you had to the, like, you didn't have to take the course. You probably had to take the test. No, actually, it's not reciprocal. Oh, so okay. I had to go back. But I did it online, and it yeah, took me, like, a couple gotcha. weeks because mm -hmm. I had already had that and trust me North Carolina is harder than Florida so Florida was like a breeze <laughs> um but James's job my husband's job moved us down here okay shout nine out years to James ago. yeah hey James um but he was working uh for the FAA um and he oversaw a contract that they had with Harris at the time and so they basically looked at him and was like you can either move to DC or you can move to Florida and I was like well I am not moving to DC right <laughs> So that's how we got here, and we actually moved back to North Carolina for, like, a hot minute. It was, like, a year or less, and we hated it. Right. And so we moved back uh, a little over six years ago, and that's when, you know, we built our house in Vieira. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've always lived in Vieira, gotcha. but we were over on, like, the older section. And right. so when we moved back, we built our new one over on the new side. And, you know, what would you say – so, I mean – so. In North Carolina, had your real estate license, or was it South Carolina? North, Carolina? North yeah, North, North Carolina. Carolina. Yeah. North Carolina. Uh, how long were you practicing uh, real estate out there? Only about a year. A year. Yeah, only about a year. Um, what and then, was that like? Um, it was tough. You know, they always say like, okay, your sphere. If you grew up here, it should be easier, right? No, it was like harder. Was it? But so, no, tell me also too, like, where in North Carolina were you close to? Like a, I mean, a big city. Raleigh. You, okay, you were close to Raleigh. Yeah. So I was in Raleigh, okay. and that you know, Raleigh is huge. It's spread out. There's a lot of little cities around Raleigh. Right. So, you know, it would be not. You know, if I had client that wanted to see. A house in Wake Forest, a house in Cary, a house in, you know, Fuquay. I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's like an almost an hour to get to each right, house. Right, right. You know what I mean? So that was rough, um, just being in a big city and obviously a lot of competition and stuff like that. But 
I don't know. I just always have found that it was easier to sell down here. I don't mm-hmm. know. I feel like strangers will trust you more than <laughs> your friends. I, I mean, I think um, I think to that point, and I was um, <laughs> something I was reading the other day. Uh, it said, I mean. Uh, it's good for people to leave their environment, right? It's good for people to leave home yeah, and go somewhere else. Whether you go back at a later point, but um, I feel like it's important, especially for young um, you know, kids coming yeah. up or young adults, leave your environment uh, for a few years. Go, go see something different because it will allow you to kind of uh, become uncomfortable, right, mm-hmm. with the situation. Um, you know, you're not going to have those crutches you're used to, right? And it'll help. I think it helps growth. It helped me tremendously um, coming here to Florida. Then again, my my move wasn't because I needed change. It was because I followed my wife and for love and things like that. But it was it was a positive thing that yeah. now has materialized to, you know, having a beautiful life here in Florida. And I love it, you know, especially here yeah. on the Space Coast. Um, and I'm sure you do, too. We it's live, awesome. like I said, I we live, it. you know, we live in the bubble, basically. Yeah. Um, uh, so tell us a little bit about in terms of so you moved here. You said you kind of lived in the older part of Vieira. Yep. Um, and I think you built a house with Vieira Builders. I did. You yep. did. Mm-hmm. Um, what was so? What year was that? What was that experience like? And what ultimately kind of you know what was your decision making process when you um, were kind of building that home, like you and James? Like how did that? So obviously, because there's resales, right? Yeah. But you know, you guys decided to build at a great time, right? Right. What oh was yeah. It, 20, 2016, maybe I think. Or? So 2016 is when we started the process, right. and then the house was done in 2017. So and so from a from a a uh, buyer and a client perspective. So for yeah. you, what was that process like when you guys, you guys obviously came in, you knew the community that you wanted to build. Yep. What's the process like in figuring out that like, like the home that you guys wanted to build? Like, you know, obviously square footage, bedroom count. How did that process work for you guys and ultimately, you know, lead you to the house that you're in now? Well, <laughs> so when we moved back, we realized that we could pretty much get a brand new construction for what some of the resales were going for, mm-hmm. and we could honestly build whatever we wanted. And when we moved back, we were like, okay, we want that Florida lifestyle. We want to pull in our backyard. Like, yeah. that was number one. And again, we were kind of, I mean, this was seven years ago when we were making this decision and building the house, so we were kind of young and dumb. <laughs> and we should have got the bigger house and put it in the pool later. Oh, you think so? Uh, yeah. Okay. So we were actually under contract on a Montgomery too okay. in Carrington. Beautiful home. Yes. And so, and part of, so we had actually looked at Tresana before we decided in Carrington. And actually Ryan at the time was like, well, there's going to be X number of homes in Tresana and X number of homes in Carrington. Sm- Carrington is smaller. Community. It's smaller. It's yeah. smaller. And so I, you know, my real estate brain starts thinking resale and I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to be in a neighborhood like that big where like, you know, if there's a bunch of houses that hit the market at the yeah, same time, yeah, you know, so I'm always thinking resale. So I'm like, okay, I kind of want to be in a smaller community. So that's kind of why we landed in Carrington. And he was also like, if you look at some of the upgrades that, you know, you already get included because the price points were higher. Right. Absolutely. And so that was another thing. I'm like, well, I know I'm going to add X, Y, and Z and that's already included yeah. in this base price. And yeah, because so. in that collection and I'm, I'm, you know, at that time, you know, we had the Trisona, it was the seventies collection, uh, which was, like I said, comparable to the carrying the, the you know that uh, collection in Carrington, where, like you said, in Carrington, um, crown molding was standard, eight right. foot doors the were standard. Doors, yeah. Where even though it was a higher base price, when you kind of factored all in, it, it was almost you know kind of it was it wasn't too far off. Exactly. So and then yeah. to be in a gated community and you know right. have a bigger lot. Lots you, and lots yeah. of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we were under contract on the Montgomery two. And the price point was kind of where we wanted to be. But again, we really wanted the pool. Yeah. So like at the very last minute, we switched to the Mediterranean mm-hmm. series yep. with tile roofs. And we got a smaller house mm-hmm. so that we could get the pool. And oh, it's so still a four-bedroom, three-bath. Got, got it, got it, got it. But we wanted the pool because yeah. we wanted to stay in a certain price range. And we were like, oh, well, if we do this Montgomery too, yeah. again, hindsight, like we should have just – it's easier to put in a pool than it is to yeah. put on a second story, yeah. which we're looking into, by the way. We got it approved. But – Did you really – Yes. <laughs> so we hired an architect, went through the whole like architectural review board and actually got it approved. Wow. I know. But again, it's a lot easier to put in a pool yeah. than it is to add a second story. So looking back, like I wish we would have gotten like the bigger house and then put in the pool later. But again, it's but just everything happens for a reason. And, and, and I think yeah. also, too, I mean, 
going back to 2016, you know, we were, you know, if we think about those prices today, back then we were like, man, this is expensive. Yes, I know. (laughs) You know, like six or seven, you were like, man, this is a lot of money, right? I was like. Whereas today, it's like, man, I wish. I wouldn't pay the price for my house right now. (laughs) Like, I mean, I guess I would if I had to, but like, I'm just like. No, yeah. It was a lot to stomach. But that's what I'm saying. Like, it's crazy, and you're a perfect um, person, a testament to seeing how much things have changed from 2016 to today. A ton. In our market, right? A ton. I mean, you know, uh, (laughs) pricing-wise, it's it's kind of like (laughs) double, which I guess is good for us, right? People who are, (laughs) you know, who got in at the right time and things like that. Um, but it just goes to show that, you know, we're in an area that's, you know, hustling and bustling, yeah, it's man. There's booming. so much, uh, awesome things going on. Mm-hmm. So, um, so you're here, you're, you're building your house in, in Vieira, um, and you're, you're, you're practicing, you're doing real estate at that time yeah. as well? Oh yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I never let go of my, even when we moved back to North Carolina for that year, I was actually flying back and forth. Wow. Yeah. Like I actually closed a couple of Vieira builders homes during mm-hmm. that year that we mm-hmm. were gone. Cause I had clients that were in the process yeah. of building when I left. And so I was like flying back and doing those closings and listing a couple of homes. So I was actually doing real estate in both States for that one year mm-hmm. that I was gone. So it's kind of crazy. So Fast forward to 2023, you actually have your own team now. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what it was like, obviously, just kind of being on your own, right? A sales associate, working for a broker Mm -hmm. to, um, and and again, you had your broker's license. I would consider you a a real estate broker, I still have my broker's license in North Carolina, yeah. So talk to us a little bit about what it was like, or even what the decision was to go from just, you know, being a you know, a real estate agent to now evolving today and having your own team and what that means for you at this point. So and tell us the name of your, your, your group. So I'm the Ross group mm-hmm. brokered by DeNova Realty. Shout so, out to Garrett. Yeah. Hey, Garrett. Hey. Um, so a few years ago, I was getting to the point where, you know, I was busy yeah. and I needed help. And so I did form a team. So that was probably a little over three years ago. And that was when I was with my other brokerage. Um, before I went to, I've been with Garrett now for a little over two years. But before that, I was with another broker for seven Wow, um, okay. I know. I'm very loyal. <laughs> um, so when I decided to form my team, you know, I had a few that were kind of up under me. And I kind of realized that I don't like managing people. I like selling homes. And so I think the most I had at one time was like four buyer's agents, like up under me. And then I had my assistant. And I just, I took a whole year before I jumped ship to Garrett. I took like a whole year and I talked to brokers that had their own brokerages and that had dissolved them. I talked to current brokers. I talked to lots and lots of people because I was trying to do my research, right? Do I want to open up my own brokerage or do I just want to kind of keep doing what I'm doing? Uh, Like a broker associate, right? No, I was, I was thinking about opening up my own brokerage. Yeah. Got it, got it. And what I realized by talking to all of those people and knowing kind of what I knew about my personality and stuff, because I'm just not good at managing people. Like I'm either a pushover or I'm a bitch. Like there's no in between. Yeah, and like, black and white. yeah, you have to be able to like deal with different personalities and yeah, like yeah, yeah. know when to, I don't know, you kind of have to be a peacemaker right. and yeah. babysitting. And I'm like, yeah. there's just no, I'm either like hot or cold yeah. and there's <laughs> Not much in between. I'm really good at selling a house, but managing people, not so much. So I decided that I didn't want the liability, first and foremost, of having that many agents and stuff. I just, I've worked hard for what I had and haven't. I just didn't want anybody else to kind of mess that up. So I wanted somebody else to hold the liability. I wanted to do what I was good at, selling homes. So that's ultimately why I decided to, you know, go to work for Garrett because he had all the systems already in place, which was something that I didn't have at my old brokerage, right? So I kind of had to, she was older. She had moved over onto the West Coast. So I was kind of everything. Older, the, the, broker. the broker. Yeah. You know so funny? she was kind of like retired, like she was checked out. And I don't mean to cut you off. I'll let you get back. But I was um, with another um, um one of your colleagues from DeNovo mm-hmm. um, earlier this week. <clears throat> and uh, I was saying, you know, like it, it's incredible to see how that brokerage is like exploding, right? Yeah. Or has just been, you know, the, the Im- Im- immense amount of success that I've seen 
you know, uh, you know, it's like every week I see Garrett holding the sign with another agent, right? I know, and agents right? that it's I know and they're, just, and they're some, <laughs> right. But um, and I asked that person, like, what do you think is what do you think it is? And she said what you just said is the systems is what she told me. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I was like, and that kind of stuck me. I'm like, wow, just because I'm also a very systems driven person mm-hmm. in terms of what I do. Um, but, um, that was something that I just wanted to point out. I mean, you know, yeah. there's, there's something good going on over there. And I think it's because also too, it's, it's more of a young, I feel, uh, mentality. I would say, I mean, you said your old broker is maybe a little bit older, right? There's, yeah. we're, we're, we're young, you know, we're yeah. still young, we're, we're youth. And I feel like, you know, it's ours for the taking out here. Yeah. Right? It's kind of what it is. Well, she was just kind of, again, like checked out, like she had kind mm-hmm. of retired. So it was like, I was having to find these systems to put into place for my team. And I was the one that was having to pay for all this, you know, and it just, I wasn't getting the support that I needed. Right. And that's another thing. Not only does Garrett have the systems in place, but he has the support there too. And yeah, everybody is a little bit on the, I mean, not, I wouldn't say young, young, but like we're all hustling, right? Like, the mindset of the brokerage is we're it's all out mindset. there. Yeah, we're all out there. We're trying to hustle. We're trying to, you know, collaborate. Right, and right, that's right. another thing. That's it's like thing. even though we're working, mm-hmm. you know, alone kind yeah, of every, out there. Yeah, every, it's every man for themselves. But right. You guys have but a team we still have and collaborate. Collaborate. Right? Yeah. yeah. And so I think that that's helpful, too, because a lot of times you get into brokerages where nobody yeah, wants to share throat. their secrets. Mm-hmm. It's very cutthroat. Yeah. Like, you know, so I do feel like that's But that's a how little, the industry's been... Right. Probably forever until, right. you know, again, and not to say that's it hasn't worked, but to see, you know, that type of uh, what I call camaraderie that you guys mm-hmm. have. And again, I'm not in it, but you can see it. Yeah. And I know several people, uh, friends of mine, including yourself, that, you know, are, are kind of bought into that system. And I think it's incredible. And not to say when I say old or young, it's just. You know, it's almost like just a different way of doing things than have been done in the past. Yeah. And I think that's what Mm -hmm. he's kind of, he's introducing a culture of, you know, kind of what you're saying, you know, working as a team, supporting each other, Mm -hmm. which wasn't really very common back then in in real estate, right? Especially if you were from the same brokerage, you know, if you're a top seller, like you said, you're not going to tell these other guys your secrets, you know? Right. Uh, But it's about, I guess, everyone winning, which is pretty cool. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's a good environment and I, I like where I'm at. So also too, so now um, continue to kind of touch on that a little bit. Um, I'm assuming now you're more of strictly listing based, right? You don't really, or do you deal with buyers as well predominantly? I do. I mean, you know, I am primarily a listing agent. Just that's kind of how the mm-hmm. you know cards have for sure fallen lately. Um, and then I have Holly, who's my buyer's agent, but she also takes listings, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's not that she only works with buyers and I only work with sellers, but we do have our specialties, yeah. right? Um, and again, it just kind of, not that I don't have time for buyers because I do still work of with course. buyers. Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, I, I do have a lot of listings. So sometimes I bring Holly in to help with buyers because I want them to be able to have a good experience. So also too, you were, you know, we all know what, you know, what happened during COVID and, you know, mm-hmm. craziness or, you know, nobody knew what was going to happen. But then very quickly, it kind of shifted out here, right? Yeah. Um, tell us your experience of what it was like uh, when interest rates were at 2 and 3% for you. How crazy was it with selling and, I mean, talk about it. 2021 was absolutely insane. <laughs> I think I was working like 70, 80-hour work weeks. I'm not kidding. Mm-hmm. Like, I got burnt out, like, really like easily like it was terrible um I mean it, it definitely affected it affected my family it affected like my mental health I mean it was rough even my assistant was only supposed to be part-time and she was working like 30 40 hour work weeks you know right. so it was insane like I think at one point we had 19 contracts going on just me and her just me and her and I was like oh my gosh I think I closed like five million in one month and I was like I feel like I need like a month sabbatical Mm -hmm. um so that was insane and then so 2022 I kind of consciously decided to step back a little bit okay going into 2022 I was like crazy how that works I need a little bit of a better (laughs) work-life balance well I had I I mean I didn't realize it was gonna be that that so (laughs) so in my last episode um, with with my good friends uh, Ben Midas and John Henderson, we touched on that uh, same thing, and we want to call it now life work balance. 
think that's how it should be called. Yeah, um, instead of work first. Instead of work first. Uh, and it's funny, they, they made a joke. They said it had to have been, you know, an American that came up with that, you know, slogan. Because uh, yeah. Ben lives in overseas. And yeah, he says, and he Lisbon, says right? He's, he lives in yeah. Lisbon. Um, so he says, you know, it needs to be a life-work balance. Because, um, again, we're so sometimes... When you're hot, you're, you gotta, you know, we're like trains are just, I like know, go after it, right? But for now, for you to continue to talk about, you kind of step back a little bit. So, yeah, I made a conscious decision that 2022, I wasn't going to, you know, work seven days a week. Like I was going to spend time with my family. I wasn't gonna put, you know, not that I'm not gonna put my clients' needs first, sure, but sure, I was sure. gonna take a little bit of a step back and mm-hmm. not have to just more and more, more, that, more, more. Was that? Well, good? was it beneficial? It, it was good for my mental health. It was great. Um, and then, of course, interest rates started to go up. And I'm like, oh, well, OK, this just naturally happened this yeah. way. Right. So naturally slowed down, naturally like, slowed yeah. down a little bit. Um, and so and in 2023, it's been a little bit even more challenging just with the inventory and the interest rates and buyers mindsets and sellers mindsets. And so, you know, you're kind of having to reeducate every client to, you know, hey, this is the new normal, because I still think that some of them don't want to accept that. Well, you know, the days of 2021, that wasn't normal. And that's, I feel like I'm constantly explaining, a lot of people understand that, right? Right. But some people are like, well, I wish interest rates were 3%. Dude, it wasn't normal. Yeah. Like for us to go back to that, we'll probably have to put a mask back on or something Uh, cataclysmic has to happen. Uh, Yeah. You know, it was good. But like you said, there was an after effect to that, that you dealt with. I mean, I dealt with something like that myself where, you know, um, we kind of lost track a little bit. We got blinded by, you know, chasing, you know, these deals and, you know, you're, you're, you're doing, like you said, you did 5 million in a month, you know, like that's, that's incredible. You know I mean? Like same, we were, we had months where, you know, I couldn't believe it either. right? Right. But at the same time. That did come with the cost, right? Uh, at some sort, your mental health. Um, 100%, just percent, yeah. Different things, you know. Being present, I think, is, and I think for you to have made that conscious decision, that's big because a lot of people don't. Well, I didn't really have a choice. James was like, "If you work," <laughs> he was like, "If you keep working like this, we ain't gonna be." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> no, that's good. But I mean, hey, like I said, at least you were able to recognize it, regardless of James. But you, you're, yeah. you know, that's like an addict. You know, it's like. You, you, you are the first person that has to admit you have a problem, right? And, and oh, like, yeah. You know, your family is going to love you and support you. Right. But, you know, if he said it, but also obvi- obviously you knew that you oh, yourself uh, yeah. needed to kind of step back. And yeah, like well, that. my dad's a workaholic, mm-hmm. so that's where I got it from. I think that's for know? me too, right? Like my parents came to this country in the 70s, and all I s- knew was them working, Yeah. right? So when I grew up, I said to myself, well, that's what I have to do, you know? And right. for them, they had no choice. They had to kind of, you know, make it work for us to give us a better life. But now I think for me, it's kind of a little bit different because I feel like I can, like you said, sometimes take your foot off the gas. It doesn't always have to be like, go, go, go. Right. Um, especially in the world we're living in now where, um, I mean, social media is so crazy. And, you know, like, I mean, we're, I'm sure you have a lot of stuff to do after this. We're here shooting a podcast. Like, you know, we are literally on the go oh, all yeah. the time. All the time. Um, you know, um, but so working now uh, fully here in Brevard, um, I'm, I would assume most of your business is here in Brevard. Oh, yeah. Even though you're, I'm sure you, you can license anywhere, everywhere in Florida. Yeah. Um, where would you say, and you, I mean, I don't know how to phrase this question. Where do you love to, like, what's your favorite area in Brevard to sell? Or is it central? Wa- <laughs> central? <laughs> well, I live in Vieira. Yeah. So obviously, you know, Vieira, central Is that Brevard. your focus? Obviously, yes. like, like what they say, like your f- sphere or like your farming area is Vieira basically kind of your, your niche market for you? Uh, you know what's weird? Yes. I would say up until recently, yes, Vieira has been my niche market. That's been where I want it to focus. It has been just naturally because that's where my sphere, that's where I live. That's where my kids go to school. They play yeah. sports in Vieira. So that's where my life is. However, I've got like a lot in Palm Bay right now. And I'm mm-hmm. like, God, that drive. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. it takes 20 to 30 minutes. And it's not that, like, I don't want to sell Fair all course. over the county. But it's, like, every time I have to get in the car, I'm like, oh, my God, it's 30 minutes. Like, versus your you golf know, cart. <laughs> versus my golf cart going to show a house, you know. Um, 
So, or it's like, oh crap, I got to go change out a lockbox. I'm like, oh my God, that's an hour in the car, right? Mm-hmm. Like just to change out a lockbox. So, oh, yeah, I, get it. I mean, I love staying in the Vieira central area. I would say that that's where I feel the most comfortable because I know the market, yeah, like the back the of my hand. You live in, yeah. I mean, and a lot of the right. houses that are reselling, you, you know, were built probably by Vieira builders or yeah. maybe a few handful of other builders. And that's, right. yeah, it's like you said, for me, I mean, I, that's what I sell I yeah. mean, obviously. And I live there and I speak on it you know, in a certain way. So yeah, you're, yeah, I think that, you know, it's a lot easier and I feel like people get a little bit better representation when they have an agent who lives in and Mm -hmm. specializes in that market. You know, it's like I was telling, I was on a listing appointment earlier this week in Rockledge. And so the three, two, nine, five, five, three, two, nine, four, Oh, like that's my wheelhouse. Right. And, you know, she was asking me about, you know, well, what, what makes that? Or like, why is that important? And I was like, Oh Lord, buckle up. Let me, let me, (laughs) you know, let me school you here. So I was telling her, I'm like, well, I'm like, okay, for example, I get a call from a seller in Titusville. I've sold in Titusville over the years, right? Would I say that I'm an expert in the Titusville market? No, I still have to use Google maps. Mm -hmm. Like, (laughs) And I'm still like getting lost sometimes because I'm like, oh, forgot my turn. Oh Lord, where am I? You know, Vera, I could probably drive it blindfolded, right? Because mm-hmm. that's how good I know it. And so I'm like, when you're pricing out homes, it's really important to know the market because yeah. right now, yeah, anybody can go based off of data, but because the market is so different right now and so challenging, you can't just go based off of data anymore. You have what to type know. What are you like referring to? Like, like comps, right? Oh, like okay. comps and like days on market and stuff like that. Like you really have to know the market. And when I talk about knowing the market, it's not necessarily the data, the comps. You have to know what buyers are looking for in that area, what they're giving value to, mm-hmm. right? Like what are the buyers that are buying those homes want in terms of features of the house yeah, yeah, and yeah. what what are they giving value to so I, I and always, that's the big difference i always i have like um you know for me like a system or just uh i very rarely will ask somebody when i meet them what's your price point for me mm-hmm. it's kind of like you know somebody it, it, it's because i've learned that when you ask somebody that they get a little bit you know, apprehensive, mm-hmm. especially when they're walking through my door, they're meeting some like a big burly guy like me in a sales. How much office. money do you want to yeah, spend? How much money do you want to spend? Like, <laughs> it's just not the the best approach. Yeah. And what I've learned to uh, to ask is, where are you coming from? Mm-hmm. Right. Let's say you're coming from Raleigh, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. You're moving here. How many are in the family? Oh, it's like it's four of us. How big? Like, what's the square footage that you have in Raleigh? Oh, we're in we're in thirty six hundred square feet. Big home, right? Right. Four bedroom, and I say himself so. Are we staying at that square footage? Are we going bigger or are we going smaller, right? Mm-hmm. And then they'll start, they, very simple questions, and they'll tell you, oh, we want to we stay in that same square footage. Right. Okay, what, and then my mind starts going because I know our product, and I can start pointing them, and that's when I start pulling out, um, you know, price sheets or st- pulling up stuff on the board, and then ver- without me even asking them right. how much they want to spend, now they're just feeling comfortable touching the board, and they're, they're going to start pointing at stuff, and then I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I understand now. Yeah. And then asking them, too, like, what is something that you loved about your house in Raleigh? Like, tell me, what, what's, what do you, like, my kitchen, or I had a beautiful bathroom, you know, and those, like you said, what's going to work for that, you know, particular, mm-hmm. what are they looking for, right? Yeah. That's, that's super important. Yeah. Um, and I think also the fact that not only do you live in Vieira or you work in Vieira, but you went through that building process, mm-hmm. which is a whole nother aspect because, yeah, you can sell resales, but representing a buyer, bringing them, let's say, to my office, right. you know, you have a first-hand account in terms of what setting the expectation for that buyer for new construction. Oh, yeah, 100%. And I think a lot of times buyers that do it alone are caught off guard mm-hmm. a lot of times because they don't understand or – especially the ones, and this is like another pet peeve of mine, the agents who they get their buyer under contract on new construction, and then the buyer doesn't hear from them. And neither does the sales agent until closing day. Mm -hmm. Maybe not even closing day. Like, they just collect their check at the end. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I literally walk my clients through. I go to their uh, preview, like, in the Mm -hmm. design center. I go to, like, their preview. You see me. You see me. (laughs) So I go to, like, their preview appointments, you know, before the design appointments because I'm trying to, like, help them – 
because a lot of buyers, they don't even know like resale, like what's good for resale, what's yeah. not good for resale. Like <laughs> I had a buyer that was trying to put in like the standard, like three quarter baseboards with the eight foot tall no, doors. And I'm like, and a quarter. I'm like, listen, I'm like, that's going to look like really <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. weird, you know, but oh, I'm yeah. there to like give advice, not like overstep, yeah, but I'm yeah. there to help well, you've, you've been through it because before. I care about them yeah. and I care about the house that they're going to build, especially if they call me up in a few years later <laughs> to, to sell, sell it. it. Like I want to be able to sell that thing. Yeah. And so I do try to go, I go to the pre-construction meeting mm-hmm. and I try to explain the whole process to them. And I even try to explain to them what to expect, you know, pricing wise, because a lot of people don't understand when they are seeing that base price, that's not what it is. Right. Like on average, people are going to tack on about eight to 10% mm-hmm. at the design yeah. center. Yeah. And so they get to the design center and then they're like, holy crap, this yeah. is a lot more than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. So I try to prepare them 100%. so that they're not so caught prepare, off guard. Pre- uh, I think that's a key word. Preparing these buyers is the most important thing. Yeah. And that's kind of what I go through um, is, you know, um, making sure that that buyer from the day they first meet me, you know, usually it's like a one or two or maybe three meetings before, you know, they actually p- decide to go into contract. But in right. that time, you know, we're figuring out, like I said, what's going to wh- what size house do they need? Uh, once mm-hmm. you figure out the home, right, whether it be in a Mediterranean or the specific home, where can we build that home? Which lots are available? Which way do you want to face? Because in Florida, it's, it's hot. Do you want your house to yeah. face west in the back and get you know, nice sunsets or some people want to face north south. So there's different, and a lot of, some of them don't be like, Oh, I never thought about that. Yeah. It's yeah, big. I know. It's, 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 it's a big ne- thing yeah. um, to do, especially if you're building a home and you have those options, right? right. You want to, what's the orientation. And then from there, I think pricing is the biggest thing. Yes. Having them understand the price. Like you said, the base price is the base price. Right. You have a lot premium if it's applicable mm-hmm. and then your design options and going yep. through that and making sure that they understand. And then the other thing is just understanding the HOA and the pricing. And that's yeah. big too, because they might want to be in a fully maintained community. They might right. want to not be, they might, you know, weekend warrior and do their lawn. I don't do none of that stuff. <laughs> so Me either. Um, I can hang a picture, but Nice. That's about it, yeah. That's and I have to, and then I still have to go on YouTube and you know make sure I'm doing it right. <laughs> get, the, get the measuring <laughs> stick out, the little leveler. Um, so tell us a little bit about obviously you. How long have you been in Vier fishing now? How long have you been in your house now? How many years? Six uh, years. Six so years. we celebrated six years back in September or October. What's that experience been like? Aside from being a re- in real estate, aside from you know what has it been like living in this community for you, for your family, for your kids? Um, It's great. I mean, and that's one of the reasons why, because we were living in Sunstone, so like the older side, the Tavistock district. Um, So we were up there in our first house. And then when we sold that and moved back to North Carolina for that one year, one of the reasons that we moved back was because we, it was just, it felt like home. Down here felt like home more than up you know, in North Carolina did, because it's just a huge community, right? Like, and everybody's from a lot of times there you meet people and they're from all over, right? Oh, like yeah. it's very rare when that meet you meet people, people from from here. from here, right? When I mean I'm just like, wait, wait. You're, you're like, from you here? Grew up I'm here? like, wow, that's so cool. Cause you just yeah, it doesn't yeah. it's like a melting pot of it people is, in Vieira, is. especially, right? Mm-hmm. And so and it's very family oriented. So there's a lot of families. There's something for everybody. And so we just and our neighborhood is amazing, right? Like we live in one of the best neighborhoods. And even though we need a bigger house, right? Because I need my own office instead of in the back of the kitchen. I love our neighbors. Like we get to it's so funny because one of my husband's friends came over the other night and was like, Man, y'all really do like do stuff all the time. He's like, y'all were just having like whiskey and wine night over here last night. Now you've got your girls over here for golden bachelor. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, we do. We like play bingo. Like we went to the Suntree country club and played bingo the other night. Right. Community, like it's a 100%. really fun community. Yeah, yeah. And so and everybody is because everyone kind of has a similar story in how they got here. Yeah. Whether it was job relocation, obviously right. he living on the space coast, a lot of aerospace, a lot mm-hmm. of engineers. So of engineers. everyone kind of has that similar you know, why or reason as right. to why they're in Vieira. And then once they figure it out and they start meeting the people, uh, it's like, man, this place is, is, I know. is pretty awesome. I don't think I've spoken to not one person. And I talk to all of my clients. I try to keep stay in touch with them after yeah. they close just to ask them, how are you? Like, or how are your kids transitioning here? Right. Yeah. Because, um, you know, some of them have kids that they pulled out from wherever they lived 
as a teenager, that's hard. You yeah. know, moving to a new area and they yeah. say, no, they're like, they love it. Like it's, you know, they get to ride their golf carts to I school. I know, right? Like just that small little aspect of, you know, we live in a golf cart community. If you drive past love the it. high school, it's how like many golf carts are there? Probably more golf carts than there <laughs> are cars. cars. But you know what? They changed the rule though. Cause rule. so the golf cart, you have to be like 15 now. Nah, I know, but I, we Who's bought a golf that? cart. I, I don't. But the school is. I think no. you have to get like a pass. Oh, like, oh the school. The school. Uh. I mean, and I'm sure if you got stopped, like, I don't know if so cops So what you say patrolling. you have a- Well, my daughter, you know, she's a freshman now at Vera. And that's one of the reasons that we moved her. Because she was going to Edgewood. Mm-hmm. She got into Edgewood. So she was going to that choice right. school for 7th and 8th grade. And one of the reasons that we moved her was, number one, I just couldn't keep making that drive over it's, to Merritt Island. Oh, it was, it's oh, it's it was terrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 30 minutes. And we were even part of a carpool, and it was still just too right, much. Right, right. And so we switched her to Vieira because I'm like, oh, okay, you can get yourself to and from school because you've got the <laughs> golf cart. Well, then they changed the damn rule. And I was like, but she she jumps on with, like, friends and stuff yeah. like that, so it's fine. But I'm like, I'm also like, okay, well, it's only, like, five minutes up the street. So, mm-hmm. like, if I have to come get you, it's fine. Stop that. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start walking, right? I go, um, <laughs> I do car loop in the morning at Vieira Charter with my oldest. Um, and a lot of people complain about it and stuff like that. But sometimes I'm just like, wh- well, what, what are you going to do? Like, this is what it is. You know I mean? I feel like a lot of times, is. you know. It's Wait till the middle school opens Yeah, up. it's just, oh, yeah, it's just going to be crazy. But, <laughs> like, it could be worse. It could right? be worse. And especially, like I said, I mean, you know, we have the Addison Club here. Yeah. It's it's a cool place. It, like I said, it could be a lot worse. It could be worse. Um, we live in a really cool place where not only that, but the weather's always nice. Yeah. Um, do you guys, what else do you guys like doing, like, outside of Vieira, like, in this area, you know, in the county um, you guys go to the beach. Do you like going to Orlando? What's some of the stuff you guys like to do? So we do like going to the parks. Okay. So um, we had uh, we had Disney passes for a while. We took a break last year. Did Universal instead. Oh, okay. It's it's fine, but we we're going back to Disney. I'm we a got Disney. Our, yeah. You know. I mean annual pass. I mean last three years. Just as my kids are at the age where. They're yeah. really enjoying it, you know? So. Yeah. Well, our son, asked, so that's what he's getting for Christmas is Disney passes. So nice. we're getting those back. So we do like going over to the parks. We have a boat. Okay. We hardly ever go on it. However, we. No way. Well, it's busy. big. Yeah, yeah, no, it's big. It. It's a big boat. Uh, we're busy. Mm-hmm. James needs to learn how to drive it. But it was <laughs> up at Harbor Town for a while, and that's a really tight marina to, mm-hmm. like, get out of. Where's that exactly? That's in Merritt Island. Okay. So it's a really, really tight marina because they, they dress store it, right? So when they put it in, it's really tight to get in and out because when you come back in, you kind of have to, like, back it in. Ooh. Well, it's only, like, a 30-foot, like, wide fairway, I guess you call it. I don't know. And it's a 29-foot boat. So, like, there is no mm-hmm. margin for, like, error or anything. Yeah, and yeah. so it was always really stressful. So we never Big took boat it problems. out. <laughs> we never took it out. <laughs> and so the um, so we bought a condo on the river Yeah, that has a boat slip. I want to talk about that, too, but we'll get to that. Just to put our boat there oh my God. so that hopefully we can use it more. But it's been there for a month, and we still haven't used it. <laughs> Um, so let's talk about two, um, really quickly in terms of, I know you and, uh, James have, um, made some cool investments over the last couple of years. I think yeah. you said you had an Airbnb in Georgia, in Georgia, in Georgia. and now the yep. condo. Um, mm-hmm. but, um, you're also kind of dipped into the world of home building and the HBCA. Yes. Talk to us really quickly in terms of what was your, um, kind of motivation to, to join that organization as a, as a general real estate agent. Yeah. So I joined the HPCA about three or four years ago. Um, had to have been four years ago. Cause I think, yeah, I think it was about four years ago. Cause I was just like a member for a year and then I got elected onto the board of directors. Right. And so I've done two years on the board of directors. So they actually, re-nominated me for like a second term because I guess I do such a good job I don't know um so with sitting on the board like they really like for board members to get involved in committees and stuff like that so when I joined four years ago I got involved in the parade of homes yeah well then they got me to chair the parade of homes right. so I've been chairing the parade of homes for the last two years so Doing a great I'm, job I must thank say. you yeah, very cool so I know they keep upping the budget every year because I keep <laughs> like going over and I told them and I'm like I'm the one that like helps for like we have a yeah. board meeting and we're like prove the financials and I'm like somebody approved them the other day and I was like hold up I was like y'all increase my budget again I was like I told y'all not to so 
I've been the official realtor sponsor now for the mm-hmm. last three or four years. Yeah. So I have that going on with the Parade of Homes. But yeah, I mean, putting that on, it's a huge undertaking. So it's a lot. Well, we just, what was it, back in October, we had the, the big gala? Yes, it's always, yeah, it's usually always the first like week or two of October. Yeah, that was fun. I was, I've, I've attended those the last couple of years. Obviously, Vera Builders is pretty heavy. Yeah, um, y'all are a showcase yeah, home and showcase, showcase community. Sponsor. Yeah. Uh, it was so funny. Everybody was joking because. Uh, we won a number of awards that night. Yeah. Uh, and we just kept, I, I guess I wish they would have like staggered them differently. Cause I know. I was like, we I was just, like, don't sit down. <laughs> we literally just kept going up there, but it's cool. And I think, um, uh, that particular builder community, because, you know, you see everyone from the County, you see yeah. people working with DR Horton, Lennar, and it goes back to, you know, this area, not that it's not cutthroat, but everyone does, it's like everyone's rooting for each other to kind of win, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I have contacts down in, in, in here in Vieira at Del Web and at Lifestyle because if there's something that we don't have for you, I want right. to point you in the right direction. Like, because you obviously yeah. want to live here, but if we don't have it for you, which is very rare sometimes, I want to try to get you with somebody right. who maybe can help you um, as opposed to just saying, well, don't like, no, like call this person at Del yeah. Web or call this person at Lifestyle or, or wherever and yeah. maybe they can assist you because, Absolutely. you know, that I think that for me is kind of big. It's just kind of moving them forward and making sure that they find what it is that they want. Right. So this year, um, you also had a, a like a what was it uh, um, a showcase home in the in the parade. Yeah, it was so a remodel. T- tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so the parade of homes is you know we have all the different builders, but we also have other categories, and we're adding even more. Right, like this year we had like a features category, so mm-hmm. like all aluminum screening was in the features category, but we had a remodel, and so Aaron with Shell Horn Construction, he's he was the contractor on the project, and so I met him. Um, you probably met the, him that night. At no, the, I met him at, w- w- what did we do at the golf course that time? There was like something. Oh, we had like the panel. golf tournament. No, there oh. was like a panel, remember? Oh, that might have been the. Because um, I was there, I was like a speaker there, and he was sitting next to me, and we, we got to talking. Was that for like a realtor preview event, maybe? I think that was, where we kind of went up for five minutes and. I think that might have been. About, so we yeah, do yeah. a spring but showcase that's where I met him. home. Okay. So it probably was something along those lines. But he actually joined um, the HBCA, so I, I know I've known him and his girl for for a while and so I got him to join the HBCA and you know in order to get you know a lot of benefit sometimes you have to like get involved right yeah, so yeah. I, I he was working on this project and I was like hey you can enter it as a remodel oh so that he was way, already working on he was already thing. working on it and so I was like we can enter it as the remodel and get you some more yeah, exposure yeah, for, right for sure so we did but that meant that I was on a deadline for that and the Parade of Homes. So it was a really, really stressful, like, two or three months. Mm. Like, super stressful. Because the whole project, like, kind of got delayed a little bit just because of, like, permitting and all that, which was fun. And so we didn't really start until July on the project. Of this year. Of, yeah, back in the mm. summer. Well, that's basically when I'm, like, deep into the Parade of Homes stuff, right? Like, we start meeting as a committee and planning in, like, May. But then come July, we're, like, in the thick of it. So, like, July and August are the two, I guess, the most stressful months of planning the Parade of Homes because of the deadlines and stuff like that. And so having the deadlines for the remodel because I, you know, I did all the design Mm -hmm. or whatever, I was like, oh, my God, this is – this is a lot. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, Very cool. But no, it was fun. That's, that's fun, and and, and um, I um, I never toured it, but I saw it in you know the pictures of it. it looked. I mean, very, very, very cool. It is. It's nicer than my own home. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're kind of coming up on a little bit of time now. A couple of things I wanted to ask too. Um, challenges. What What are the some challenges you feel like you face right now in the market um, as a as a realtor? Um, Obviously, I mean, is it is it a good time right now to buy? Is it a good time to sell? You know, what are challenges you're seeing in the market right now here where we live? I think that it's always it's never it's never really a bad time. It's just what are your goals, right? So, you know, right now as a buyer, you actually have a benefit, right? Like homes aren't selling as fast as they were. Buyers are they do have a 
a little bit of a leg up on the sellers because they're able to negotiate because right. these homes are sitting there for a little bit longer. And so right now that's a huge advantage to buyers because they're not having to pay, you know, crazy over list price. They're not having to waive contingencies and stuff like that. So I, you know, I've been trying to tell buyers if you're on the fence, you know, you're paying a hundred percent in rent, right? Like right. rent 100%. is a hundred percent interest, right? So I get that the interest rate is high, but you know, get the house, yeah. get, just get into a house because if rates do go down, you can always refinance and then you're not having to compete against 10 other buyers yeah, that think, really want that house. I think everyone's house. fear is all they think about is the interest rate. That's all people are thinking about. Yeah. And then I feel like, like I said, it's our job to actually educate these people and say, right. listen, man, like, yes, rates are, are high, right? Right. Not, historically, not super high because they've no. been higher. Uh, in yeah. Eight, like my, right. my parents, I mean, oh, my first insurance uh, was like 12, 18%. 12%, percent, right? 17%, yeah. But, <laughs> so it's kind of one of those things where that's driving a lot of the negativity yeah. or the or the people kind of just the hesitancy for a lot of buyers. Right. Where, again, it's like, dude, do you want to pay 500000 for this home today at a higher interest rate or – end up potentially paying six or 700,000 and competing against 10 offers when interest right. rates go down. Right. Right. It's like, cause as you know, soon as interest rates drop down into, you know, the fives or sixes, it's you're going to see crazy again. it's going to, because I've even noticed just in the last like week or two, cause interest rates drop like, like yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. That, showing the number of showings like showings have picked up so i'm yeah. just i'm sitting here thinking to myself i'm like okay if interest rates do drop yeah. down even into the sixes yeah that's what's going to be you're oh, going to yeah. have all these buyers oh, flood yeah. the market again and so it's it, it is a mind shift um you know another challenge in this industry right now is just sellers because they you know some of them still think that their house is worth because yeah, you know there's yeah, a difference yeah. between market value and market price. Well, yes, Mister Seller, your house might be worth this. But that doesn't mean someone's going to pay. But for that it. doesn't mean that somebody's going to pay that, <laughs> right? Like market price yeah. might be down here. And I think so. that's why I see because obviously I do pay attention to to, to the market, right? Uh, in in our area, sales and stuff. The people, the houses that you see that are sitting, it's because um, they've overpriced it. Yeah, and mostly. they've probably gone through one or two, three price reductions. You as an agent looking at that home for your buyer, you're like, let's wait, let's see how far, how how much far. So that, yeah. that person, how desperate basic, can yeah, they get? That that buyer, that seller has already pretty much you know shot themselves in the foot a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, and I think you know how do you get? How do you do? You have to have these come to Jesus moments with these you know, sellers and kind of bring them back down? Like, how does, like, how, what's that conversation like that? Like, yeah. So I try to, without offending, right. You I know. know right. To, Cause a lot, some of them do get pissed off. Luckily I haven't really had that problem. My sellers have actually been pretty great to work with, uh, recently, not always, but recently they have been. So I usually try to be as upfront from the beginning because I don't, and I tell people, I don't want to tell you what you want to hear just to get my sign in the yard. I'm not like that. I'm very realistic. I'm not going to be Debbie Downer, but I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, just and so I try to deal. set expectations up front, but here lately I have been, the way that I have to do it is I really try to pull like a market summary report and I try to get very, very detailed with it. And then I even go as far as the last price drop that I had to ask for. I basically broke down the number of active homes that fit kind of what theirs was within that whole zip code, right? Yeah. So, like, I took the entire zip code, and I was like, here's the number of active homes. Here's the ones that are in your price range that have similar features to yours. Here's how many are under contract. Here's the prices. Like, here's what buyers are looking for in these homes. So, I really, like, got extremely analytical with the data. <laughs> just real to, numbers, though. I mean, real point, numbers sure? yeah, yeah, yeah. to show, you know, hey, listen, I know that when we price this home, there were comps to support that price. However, this is what buyers are buying, right? Like they're not buying this, they're buying that. So if you want to sell, you're going to have to drop down, right? Because it, it needed some updates, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, buyers are looking at the fact that they're going to have to come in and they're going to have to put this in and that in, and that's going to cost them X amount and X amount. And so this is the price that I think you need to be at. And of course we did, we dropped to that price and we're under contract right now. But, you know, I really have to break down data for people and really explain it and not are, just like go to them and be like, hey, we need a price drop. What are average <laughs> days on market right now Brevard for the county as a whole it's in like the four it's like either 42 or 47 okay. days okay. as a whole for yeah. Brevard County but then you know it's zip code specific it mm -hmm. gets a little worse gets a little bit better so the yeah. 32940 baby 
I know. That's well, it <laughs> depends on the price point and yeah, that yeah, zip yeah. code because yeah. that's that's another like huge skew, right? Because, mm-hmm. I mean, if you can get into the year in the four or five hundreds, you're like, sign me up, you know, but the ones that are a little bit higher, people are like, yeah. <laughs> Um, And what, it, um, any cool things on the horizon for you? Projects or, you know, anything you want to disclose or talk about? I'm like taking a break now. Um. I I think for 2024, I have kind of, I really enjoyed like the remodel or whatever. And I've always kind of enjoyed remodeling homes. So I've done some flips with my dad and stuff. That's actually why I got my real estate license to mm-hmm. begin with yeah, years and years ago. Because mm-hmm. my dad, you know, I was a teacher for like three years and I was like, oh my God, I hate this. <laughs> And so my dad was like, well, why don't you go get your real estate license and we can flip houses together because my dad knows how to do everything. I mean, mm-hmm. everything. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, then a year after I got my real estate license, James moved me down here to Florida. So right. dad was like, what the hell? No. Um, move but down now, here. Let's, let's get him a house. But <laughs> he's, he, he did. He moved down here. He? So they moved down here oh, full time. Awesome. Yeah. So, cool. so they actually bought a bank owned property from me about, I don't know, five or six years Very ago. Cool. Very and they're... They're down here full time now. Here. He's actually working on one right now in downtown O'Galley. Okay. One of been, yours. Well, he bought it. I mean, I'm ah, the one okay. that found I got, I got it. And it. I was like, hey, dad, here, like you know. Flip? Yeah. Well, I told him to hang on to it because there's so much development going on in O'Galley right now. I think it's a good place to sure, purchase sure, sure. and hang on to. But I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do when he gets done. But he's stubborn and he likes to do all the work himself. So he's been working on it <laughs> hey, for I mean, like as 18 long as months. Still, as long as he's still able to do it, right? Let him. Let I know, him, let him get it done. but he's slow. And so, you know, um, Aaron and I have talked about like partnering together, you know, on some more projects and stuff. So I think for 2024, that's probably going to be my focus is to try yeah. to find a couple of projects to work on, like in between all of my real estate stuff. Yeah, but I'm in that same I boat. do enjoy that. Me and my wife want to do a, we, we did a couple cool stuff this year. Uh, 2024, we want to do a, like our first official like flip, Yeah, you know, like a gut and just to, yeah, see how you goes. learn a lot. I mean, I've yeah. learned, and I also feel like it's helped me in my business with my clients. And that's mm-hmm. another thing that, you know, people have like left me reviews or they talk about their experience with me. And they're like, you know your shit because you have been through, like, I can go before the inspector even comes out and mm-hmm. I can call out a bunch of red flags or mm-hmm. I can tell them how much it's going to cost to fix it because I've. I've done yeah, so many of, of these, right? Before, yeah. So I'm experienced in, okay, what, you know, what's a big, what's a big ticket item or mm-hmm. what's, what's something that yeah, you should be concerned about, it, right? I mean, right? Like, yeah. is it just cosmetic or is this truly an yeah, issue? Yeah. yeah. And I think me too. I mean, obviously building homes, I mean, I walk right. job sites all the time yeah. and you know, I've made so a lot learn. of good, yep. you know, connections with, you know, different trades and things like that. So right. we'll see. Um, so lastly, um, any advice you have for people out there? Maybe, um, should they get their real estate license? Should they, boy, you know, run, something. run far. <laughs> No. Um, So I actually get asked that a lot. Yeah. I get asked that a lot. And um, what I tell people is, you know, don't believe what you see on HGTV. Right. I freaking feel like Selling Sunset and all these other TV shows have made All they do is go to lunch and have salad. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) That's all we do. Um, So I do feel like, you know, TV has portrayed agents in a certain way. And, you know, it's hard out there. I mean, I think it's something like 87% fail within their first couple of years as a real estate agent because it's a lot tougher than what people realize. Mm -hmm. And so somebody that's looking into getting into this, they really have to get into it because they have like, they have a passion for it and they want, this is what they want to do. Not like I'm going to get in and I'm going to make boo koodles of money and I'm only going to work like a few hours a week. No. Like if that's why you want to get into this, like don't like, don't (laughs) even, don't even waste your time. Um, And then I think another thing is to just know the type of lifestyle that you're going to have. I mean, you're never off, right? Like even when you go on vacation, you can't just check out for a week. Like I I always sell a home on vacation. uh, Me too. I always tell James, I'm like, I'm slow again. Let's plan a vacation. Like, no, it's, it's insane. Like I will be wherever I go and it's just like, it'll never, it never fails. It never fails. (laughs) I always get busy. If I plan a vacation, I get busy right before vacation. So I'm actually going on a cruise in a couple of weeks, so I really hope that I get a couple of contracts in. <laughs> That's it. Get the Wi-Fi uh, package. You'll be good. <laughs> but I would say that, you know, it's a slow it's a slow process. It's not a get-rich-quick yeah, career. No, You've really sure. got to work hard at it. You've got to hustle. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's tough right now, especially with the NAR lawsuit and all that, those talks about how mm, this industry. Rates, yeah, yeah, the yeah, industry, right, right I think, that. is um, – 
it's been shaken up a little bit. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see how the next year or two f- unfolds. So anybody that's looking to get in right now, there's some challenges that are yeah. coming down the pipeline. So yeah. go like go educate yourself because I it's think a also bumpy too, road. you know. Do good by yourself. Do good by others. Be do honest, you know, stuff. I think you're always going to be good. Absolutely, and that's um, that's what I always. That's my motto. Last question. I ask this to everybody. Right? Oh Lord, what is Megan Ross's favorite food? My favorite or food, or like last meal, or maybe something that you grew up eating in North Carolina that you regret. Like what's a, like what's your? Oh my God! Like I wish like the the most delicious thing you've ever had in your life that you want to have right now, sitting right here. I don't know, because that's like. I mean, I eat peanut butter every day, so that's probably like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just chunky that's probably peanut my, butter or, or creamy peanut no, butter. No, cream. Well, actually, I don't care. I like, it doesn't I like matter. I like chunky and cream. You eat peanut butter every day. Every day, I eat it on a bagel, like every morning. Um, I must don't have any bagels, and then I'm like, crap. What am I gonna eat for breakfast? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I have a favorite. Like, you don't have a favorite food aside from just peanut, peanut butter? butter that I eat every day. <laughs> Okay, hey, uh, peanut I, butter. I mean, I mean, I like steak. I like, you know, yeah, yeah. I like salmon. I like tuna, but like, I wouldn't. Any good eat restaurants it. you like? I had to eat it every here, day. Give a little, yeah. you know, promo to some local spots where you like to eat. So, Urban Prime is really good. We, haven't been we, there yet. Okay, it's really there. good. It's okay. really good. Um, I want to go there for lunch because their lunch menu looks really good. But okay. we have gone to eat dinner a couple there? of times there. They do. I want to their drinks are very fancy right and good. Now. Um, but you know, fancy like bougie? drink wise though, yeah, they're a little bougie. But okay. drink wise, I'm telling you, Alibi has like the best. Where's that? Alibi, it's like downtown Cocoa Beach. Alibi, the best. Oh my god, you haven't been to the for Alibi drinks yet? Or it's restaurants for drinks. I mean, they have like little tapas little, or whatever. Okay. Alibi, like, Alibi. Okay, I got yeah. to look at Alibi. That. You got to look into that. Okay, very cool. Take Just my go on my here. Instagram. Got it. All right, so um, we're almost done. I want you to look into that camera. Okay. Tell them who you are. Tell them. Um, just where they can find you. Call me. No. Um, so I'm Megan Ross, the Ross Group brokered by DeNova Realty, and I specialize in live in the VR area. Give them your social so, media. Your phone oh, yeah. Number. My social media is very easy. Megan Sells Brevard, M-E-G-A-N. No no funny business up in there. Just regular Megan Sells Brevard is my Instagram. You can find me on Facebook, too. I have a business page, DeNova Realty, Megan Ross, or the Ross Group. Crap, now I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the peanut butter. But it's my picture. Um, my banners are up at schools. Yeah, you can yeah. see me in the avenues. Very so cool. I'm like I have everywhere. Seen you in the avenues before. Yeah, I'm like very everywhere. Cool. So if you can't find me, you're not looking very hard. <laughs> well, Megan, thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you for you having me. For coming yes. on. Um, thank you. I know you for you're super me. busy. I hope you guys yes. have a beautiful Thanksgiving. Thank you. you too. Uh, I'm grateful for you guys to be here. Awesome. Thanks for um, having me. That's this was a wrap. Fun. Episode this was fun. seven is done. Thank you to my good friends, uh, good guys, John. Uh, and Alex here being on site, man. It's good to see you guys and very happy for everything, all the success. But uh, appreciate you guys. Happy Thanksgiving.